at least they understand. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Don't patronize. I realize I'm losing and this is my real life. I'm half asleep and I am wide awake. This habit is always so hard to break. Honey here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, today, before we start off the video, quit sniffing me. Before we start off with the video, um, I have to make an announcement. So, over the past few months, I kept noticing that there is this weird fad called Musical.ly. And, um... Honestly, I watched a couple of Musical.ly's on YouTube, and I, I didn't get the appeal. I didn't get the appeal of this, so um, I decided to try it out. Okay, so I downloaded it, and um, I did a few of my own, which is interesting. Kinda. I didn't know I was actually going to be good at it. I thought I was going to keep messing up and stuff. You know what I mean? So, um... Uh, yeah. And, uh... I, tr I try to keep it as funny as possible. Honestly. Um... And so, for your guys' viewing entertainment, here are a couple of... Uh, how do I say this? Here are a couple of demonstrations on what I do on Musical.ly. Wrong situation and anytime you want it to stop. I know I can treat you better than he can And any girl like you deserves a gentleman Every time you walk inside the room, got me feeling crazy Check my heart, boom, boom Any other boy would stare, but me, I look away Cause you're making me scared Trying not to breathe, one, two, three Trying not to freak when you look at me If I can't feel That was nothing. What are you doing here? My duplicate should have been. You sneaky geniuses. Anyway. So, I guess it's time to start the video. Anyway, so, if you are wondering on why you're here, then you should have read the caption before you clicked on my video. <laughs> um. Because, okay, so you're here because um, it is another read aloud. Huzzah, huzzah. Yes, I know, I know. I'm cool, I'm cool. No, I'm kidding. So if you don't know what a read aloud is because you're new and you're kind of into my channel, a read aloud is where I pick a story or you guys list off a story in which I am still taking requests, rather you can leave them in the comments, um, in the, uh, comment section, or you can, uh, give me suggestions through my, my Tumblr and my Twitter. My Tumblr and my Twitter. That's about it. So, yeah, there's that. So, yeah. I, uh, next time... I am planning on doing, continuing the Revenge Attack read aloud. So, if you're into that, prepare yourselves. Prepare yourselves! Anyway. So, this is a story fan fiction uh, called I Can Forgive Them Because I Love Him. Um, I was reading, I've 
already read some of this. I don't know why I stopped reading it. So, yeah. And if you don't know what Stony is, because once again, you are new to this area of YouTube. And like you're getting into like the yaoi pairing she's it's basically where uh, it's basically uh tony stark aka iron man and steven rogers aka captain america are an item, item. Yes. so without further ado let's get started wait why did i do that So, chapter one, the disappearance. It's been about four months since Tony was kidnapped while he was at a conference in England. They found him in Russia in a seemingly abandoned factory. He's been acting rather strange since he was rescued a week ago. He was quiet and jumpy, even timid. He would flinch hard when anyone had even just brushed against him. He would stutter nervously or even just clam up altogether when someone tried to talk to him. He refused to look at people in the eye and when it and when he did, it was only a rapid glance. He rarely went to the lab at all. He spent most of his time hiding in his room. Whatever happened to Tony, it broke him. The team quickly noticed the changes in Tony, but had no clue how to go about it. It took about three weeks before Clint couldn't take it anymore, and his curiosity con took control. He knocked on Tony's door, but there was no answer. He tried again. Silence. He then returned. He then he then turned the knob, and to his shock, the door opened to a difficult to a default room. It was as if Tony was never there. Clint was officially freaked out. Out of everything this man has seen, this is what freaks him out! Touche. <clears throat> Tony was missing again. Clint bolted to their common room where all the other Avengers, besides Thor, sat. Guys, guys, Tony's missing again! Steve was the first to get up after bookmarking and closing his book. Clint, calm down. What do you mean he's missing again? Camp, Cap tried to calm the assassin down enough to explain. Dude, look at his room! Clint demanded. Steve did as he was told and only dropped the book he was reading. He stared wide-eyed into the clean room that left no trace of Tony Stark. Steve rushed to Tony's lab, followed by the other present Avengers, only to find it spotless and empty. All of his inventions were gone, his blueprints were gone, hell, even the trash was gone. There was a small layer of dust on the tables and desks and shelves. There was, again, no trace of the genius. They all had no clue what happened, nor how it happened, without any of them noticing. They quickly asked Jarvis where Tony was. He replied, but it didn't help them get any relief. I don't know where Mr. Stark is. He only called Tony, sir, but they didn't really notice. Agent Coulson walked up to them. Hello, Avengers. I see you found the new shield lab. The team looked shocked and worried. Where's Stark, Coulson? Natasha glared. Car, car, cautiously. Phil simply replied, "Gone." Steve snapped at Phil, "Gone? Where?" The agent remained calm. That's classified. Even I don't know. In fact, I doubt that Shield even knows where Mr. Stark is. He replied, "Now that was shocking." Colonel Rhodus will take the place of Iron Man. He, however, will be known as War Machine. 
Now, if you'll excuse me, I must be on my way. The agent then turned around and left without another word. You are surprisingly calm about this, Agent Coulson! Anyway. About two months later, Rhodey was officially moved in. He refused to move into Tony's room. It was now kind of used as a small museum for all that had, all they had of Tony. Sure, it was strange. He wasn't even dead, but they wanted to honor him as a member of the Avengers. Whenever they got a new magazine talking about Tony, they had a, they had the article framed. Recently, it had been about him. It's all been about his disappearance. Rudy brought some of some things from some of his adventures with Tony. As months went on, as when the on, oh, as months when the on, as months went on, they told the Avengers all about the shenanigans. He told the event, the other Avengers all about the shenanigans that he and Tony got into. All the laughs, the arguments, the stress, the good times, the bad times, and how Tony stayed as his friend no matter what they went through. There's one thing, however, he didn't tell them. Rojas knew what happened to Tony and where he was. Interesting! Next, the mechanic. It had been about three years since Tony's disappearance. Steve real, realized long ago that he had lost. He realized that not on, that he not only lost a friend, but someone he fell in love with. He never came to terms with Tony's disappearance. He, he could only hope that Tony wasn't... No, he couldn't think like that. Tony had to be alive. The world, however, decided Tony was dead until further notice. But the Avengers, mostly Steve, believed he was alive. Lately, Rhodey had been disappearing a lot with no explanation. He would sometimes do it more than once a week. Anyway, the Avengers' la latest mission was out in Tennessee. <laughs> Are you from Tennessee? Because you're the ten assy. I couldn't help it, okay? Alright, okay. That was a bad pick of mine. Bad joke. There were giant doom bots tearing up the woods and fields searching for something. Unfortunately, the Avengers, their aircraft, was destroyed in the fight. Luckily for them, they found an old pickup truck and an old abandoned pickup truck, an old abandoned fill up joint in the middle of nowhere. That's a funny place to find an old pickup truck. Couldn't manage to hotwire it. How is it working? If it's abandoned, why is it working? Logic of heroes, man. Logic of heroes. Natasha and Bruce rode in the cab of the truck while Steve, Rhodey, Clint, and Thor all rid, rid in the bed. Rhodey called to Natasha through the broken w window. Turn up here. There's a small town about 20 miles that way. Natasha nodded, not really questioning Rhodey's knowledge of this place. As he said, about 20 miles there, were, there was a small town. The people seemed content and happy. About as soon as they made it to the outskirts of town, the pickup broke down. So they had to walk into town. Townspeople didn't seem to mind that they were, that they were there. If this was to as if this was totally normal. Rhodey walked up to one of them and talked to them and nodded with the nodded with a laugh. The person was a nice older woman. She then walked off. About ten minutes later, she came back with her minivan. I'll give you guys a ride to Mr. Parker. He's our town's resident mechanic. I'm sure he can help 
you kids with anything you need. The lady smiled brightly. Thank you, ma'am, Steve said warmly. He was, she was glad to help. Now, pile in, everyone. I really hope that was the woman. <laughs> it was a tight squeeze. Ooh. It was a tight squeeze. Thor was in the front, Steve and Rhodey in the middle, and Natasha, Clint, and Bruce in the back. The young lady drove them to this Mr. Parker's house and told them how the man would put on concerts for the town and incorporate the teens of the town too. He babysits for everyone too and sometimes substitutes at the school. This Mr. Parker seems like a downright fine gentleman. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He does sound good though. They soon pulled up to a cute to a cute white farmhouse with a large farm. She dropped them off. The Avengers heard music inside the large red barn. There was a little boy outside playing with his cat. He soon noticed them and quickly ran into the barn. They were expecting an old man. They were expecting an old, grease-covered, shirtless old man in overalls to walk out. They weren't expecting a powerful blast from their past, wearing a rock, a rocking, eh, uh, wearing and rocking the cowboy style, to come out utterly shocked. C can I help you? That's that's amazing. That is amazing, my friends. That is amazing. Okay, since it said it was playing music in the background, I want to continue playing my music. Just for the hell of it. Anyway. Chapter 3. The Discovery. Yes. C can I help you? There was this southern roll in his slightly higher voice that didn't belong. The man in front of them looked younger since the last time they saw him, but they knew for a fact that a lot has changed in his few years. For one, the beard was gone, his body was thinner, and his skin was tanner. He looked much healthier, too. Mama, who are they? The little boy from earlier had somehow wrapped his arm around the man's leg without the Avengers noticing. Wait, Mama? Did the kid just say Mama? What the hell? The man picked up, picked the boy up, and hunted him onto his hip as if the boy weighed the amount of a bag of food. There people I used to work with. The man replied cautiously. He held the boy close. Rhodey's suit opened and he stepped out with a grin. Uncle Rhodey! The little boy exclaimed happily and reached towards Rhodey. Rhodes. Whatever. The boy's mother handed him to his uncle. How you doing, Peter? He smiled as the little boy told him about helping his mama fix the tractor. He then turned to the child's mother. You look good, Tony. Tony was... Tony was this boy's mom. Had he adopted? Thanks, Rudy. Pete's been a big help around here. He's real good at cow milk. Ain't you, bud? Tony finally spoke fondly to the little boy as his son. Not as his mother. Uh, as his son, not as frantic. Sure am. Tony chuckled and ruffled his hair. Well, let's get inside. Get inside the house. I'm sure y'all got a lot of questions. Tony motioned to the Avengers toward the house. Besides, I'm sure he wants to play with Brody. Peter giggled happily and nodded excitedly. They all headed inside. Tony sighed. This is gonna take a while. Not fun having your abandoned crush throwing in your face and he was not prepared to give Steve 
the details on Peter's birth or the fact on who the father is. Interesting. So that's as far as I want to get here. So once again, the story is called I Can Forgive Them Because I Love Him. And this is by Cass Winchester 67. Hara. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this read aloud. And, um, next time it's going to be like a story time. I'll tell you a little story. I know. Next time. So, I hope, so once again, I hope you guys enjoyed my read aloud. And if you enjoyed my videos and the content and what I do, please like and subscribe and join the Slenderman's Harem. Because we love new members. So, I hope to see you all again next time. Ladies. Your life is done, he took it all with him So you drink enough for it to wash away the sins It's such a shitty thing